Welcome to the Plan Disney Podcast, presented by State Farm. Whether you're looking for 24-7 support, access to your policy on the State Farm app, or you just want to speak to an agent, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Amira Martin, your host, and I'm also a former panelist. Besides that, I'm a mom of three, and one of my three kids is all about adventure, so she's going to love today's topic. Like Belle, I'm always looking for adventure in the great wide somewhere. So on this episode, we're gonna talk about a group of magical vacation options where you're gonna go beyond the parks, but you're still gonna get that magic that we get with Disney and that we've all come to love. I'm talking about Disney Cruise Line, Aulani, and Adventures by Disney. Plus later, we'll speak to a destination manager and former adventure guide about how they infuse Disney service and magic in itineraries throughout the world. But first things first, Let's meet our panelists for today's episode. Hello, Doug. Hi, how are you? (laughs) How are you? I'm doing great, Amira. It's great to be back. So Doug was a guest on our very first episode back in March, where we talked all things spring break. Now, if you missed any of those episodes, you can go back and check them out. But for anybody that's new to our podcast, Doug, would you mind giving us a little introduction? Sure. So I'm I'm Doug. I'm from uh, the class of 2009, which was just the second year of the panel, actually. Um, and I can't believe we're actually celebrating our 15th year, which is so exciting. And the fact that we're filming in Germany, not actual Germany, the Germany Pavilion at Epcot. It's just, it's a thrill. So I'm a Walt Disney World specialist on the panel. And what's neat about it, for those who don't know what the panel is, it's it's really a bunch of Disney guests like you who are enthusiasts, who Disney ha- helps us provide guests who have questions with very specific tailored answers to their questions when they're planning a vacation. And what's also exciting about it is it's not just about Walt Disney World, which is what I kind of focus on, but we've got panelists who handle things like Disney Cruise Line, you mentioned, uh, who handle uh, Disney Vacation Club, and also uh, Disneyland. So we got a lot of different people covering different things. And I'm actually, uh, I'm actually from Indiana. I live there with my wife and two teenage daughters. Oh, I love that. Now, we have two beautiful ladies here. We also have Ashley and Kathy. Ashley, would you like to tell us about you? Yes, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I am a wife. I'm a mom of two. And this is my first year on the Plan Disney panel. I specialize in Walt Disney World, and I love answering vacation planning questions for our guests. Oh, my gosh. So glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy, how about you? Hi, I'm Kathy from Ohio um, with Doug. I'm from the class of 2009. Um, I've been to Disney World too many times. I... I stopped counting. It doesn't even matter anymore. Um, I come here several times a year. This is our vacation home. This is where we come for our getaways with my family. Um, my specialty is Walt Disney World, but I've also done about 20 Disney Cruise Line cruises. So I am helping out this year with Disney Cruise Line questions. So I love sharing everything about being on the land and sea. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So you're my go-to girl. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, we have so many incredible things to talk about. And... We have a lot of adventures to talk about. For sure. We don't have a lot of time. So let's just jump right into it. You guys ready? We're ready. Okay, let's do this. So I feel like we need to talk with you, Kathy. You know why? Disney Cruise. That's my favorite. Disney there Cruise you go. Line. There so you I need go. to know all the details. So well, let sure. us know about the fleet. Yeah, well, Disney Cruise started off with two ships. They started with the Magic and the Wonder, um, and then the Dream and its sister ship, the Fantasy, uh, joined the fleet. Um, but then the big news was um, summer of 22 when the Disney Wish joined the family. And this ship is going to be fantastic. Now, I know, Amira, you were on the ship, mm-hmm. and I actually filled a pod- filled a, filmed a podcast there. You did. And that's a fabulous episode. So if anyone wants to go check that, out to see a little bit more about that beautiful ship. Um, I've sailed on the first four. I do have a cruise scheduled on the Wish in a few weeks, um, an annual girls trip, and this year it's going to be on the Wish. Oh my gosh. So it's going to be super exciting just to go to go experience something new on Disney Cruise. Yes. Um, and with the five ships, uh, there are just so many options now. Um, whether you want to sail to the Caribbean, Alaska, Europe, Mexico, um, it, the list just keeps going. And a lot of times people cruise and they think a beach vacation. Yes. But you have to remember that these ships also sail north. So you can hop on a ship in, in New York City and sail up Canada. Um, Vancouver, um, there's a port there that sails up to Alaska. So there's a lot of different options um, when choosing choosing your cruise. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So, so many options. And there's so many things to explore as well, you know. So what what type of opportunities do we have to explore maybe on each ship or something 
different or spectacular? Well, that is where the fun comes in okay. on a Disney cruise because <laughs> you're on the ship and it's the world's greatest vacation, but then you stop at all these fantastic ports of call. Yes. And once you're at these ports of call, um, you can go to different port adventures. Now you can book these port adventures ahead of time, or you can stop by the port adventures desk once you're on the cruise ship and they will tell you, okay, you have kids, you're just adults. They'll give you some great advice of what to go explore when you're at those ports of call. Oh my gosh. So we definitely need to make a stop there, is what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay. And it's a great idea to browse ahead of time on the Disney Cruise Line website to see what might work for you. Um, but like I said, if you wait and wait to get on the ship and see what's available and, and kind of wing it, that's all right too. Kathy, what was one of your favorite port adventures during your Disney Cruise? Well, my family sailed to Alaska and that was one of our all-time favorite cruises. Um, and when we would get to some of these beautiful destinations, my kids were like, oh, let's climb to the top of that mountain. And I'm like, mama doesn't climb up a mountain. Like there's no way that's gonna happen. Um, so we found an excursion, uh, a port adventure um, in a four by four vehicle. And we took the four by four vehicles to the top of the mountain, same result, same views. Um, but it was just, it was tailored to our family. So it, it really worked out well. Um, but you can do, there's just so many different options. Like I know in Alaska, especially you can go dog sledding, you can take helicopter rides up to glaciers. Um, if you're sailing in Europe, uh, go see a castle, do a cooking class. The, the options are, are, are unbelievable that you can do. Um, and what I really like is after you do these adventures, you head back to the ship. Your stateroom has been cleaned while you were gone by your lovely stateroom host or hostess, and your, everything is where you left it. So there's no moving your bags um, between ports or anything. So you have that adventure by day, and then you come back to your room, and it, it's everything is ready and waiting for you. So it's it's kind of a nice mix of that vacation within a vacation um, that you can experience during your Disney cruise. Now we know that there's a lot to do. We also know that some of the ships actually stop at a special island. Absolutely. So, I mean, <laughs> you want the ultimate port of call, friends. You want to stop at Disney's private island, Castaway Key. This is an island paradise. Perfect sandy beaches, um, parasailing, and one of the best parts is, as a parent, we all have kids. We know what it's like to go to a beach vacation and you're hauling beach chairs and umbrellas oh and towels and yes. everything else. Um, Ashley, I know you have a couple little ones. It's I have always... two little ones and beach vacations can be tricky. So this is very appealing to me is we also have a wish cruise planned Yay. for this spring. So listening to you is making me yeah, way more excited right. for our trip and so, not hauling items. Right. Yes. So when you get off the cruise ship, they have towels waiting for you. You get to the beach and you have your beach chairs and you have your umbrellas. And don't even worry about the picnic lunch because they have a beautiful barbecue waiting for everyone to go enjoy. So midday, you head over to Cookie's Barbecue and, and you have a great feast before heading back to the ship later in the afternoon. Um, now, for those who have older kids like I do, um, there is a quiet beach. It's for 18 and older, Serenity Bay, um, only adults. It's kind of nice. You go over there, have your own barbecue, your own beach, everything. So it's kind of a kid-free zone, uh, which is a nice break. And yeah. it's, it's a wonderful getaway for um, guests 18 and older. So if you do want to visit Castaway Key, um, when you're booking your cruise, um, it's actually when you're choosing your destinations, it says, do you want to stop at Castaway Key? So oh. you can't miss. So you just click on that and it will only populate cruises that are stopping at this beautiful island paradise. So that's always helpful. Oh my goodness. Yes. You're saying the words that I want to hear. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Okay. So exploring other destinations are great, but one of the best things about doing a Disney cruise is that right on the ship, you have so many things that you can enjoy. Well, that's part of it. When you're on a Disney cruise, you still get that Disney magic. Right. The service, as you expect when you're um, at Alani or in Adventures by Disney or at, at uh, Disney Parks, that service, it continues on the ship. From your dining service team to your um, stateroom host, uh, you're gonna feel like royalty. They really treat you, <laughs> you're not gonna wanna get off the ship. Like you just wanna stay on that ship. Um, and there is so much included with your cruise. There's entertainment, there's live shows, there's movie theaters. Um, some cruises even have fireworks at sea, which is unique, a unique experience to be on a ship and you're watching your fireworks. Since it is Disney, you have to have Disney pals. Of course. So there is Disney character meet and greets. You can get autographs, get a big hug from Mickey and Minnie, and even Captain Mickey and Captain Minnie make appearances. Oh so you want to make sure to grab your photos uh, with all your favorite Disney pals while you're on ship. Oh my goodness, that sounds like so much fun. So much fun. And I'm I ready know, to Ashley, book my next you do I have, you, again, you have the younger children, and there are the kids clubs. 
that they really love to go to. And I know when my kids were younger, I didn't see them the entire cruise. They'd get on, <laughs> they'd be off to the kids' clubs, and we'd be lucky to have them back by midnight. Um, so I think it's something your kids would probably enjoy going with the other young ones to yeah, explore. I think they would love it, and it gives us time to have our own adult time on the cruise as well and, and explore some of these things that you've already talked about. Well, and one of the great things you can explore, with, speaking of all the great service, is the food on the Disney cruise ships. Yes. Uh. And when your kids are <laughs> off happy at the clubs, you can make a, a reservation at Palo, which is the adults, again, 18 and over restaurant. And it is one of the most amazing dining experiences you can have. First of all, you don't have your kids, which is great. Um, <laughs> but the menus and the service and the knowledge of the servers, it's just, it's fantastic. So that would be a nice getaway uh, for you and your husband when you're a perfect you know, date ship. night at sea. Yes. It is. It really is. Um, and if you don't want to, do the Palo, and after you're done with your, your dining rotation, there is also room service that's complimentary. Oh, so yes. if you just want to sit back in your room and three in the morning you need a pizza, you make that quick phone call and that pizza will show up at your door. Um, I also like to do complimentary room service in the morning. So if you want to put your order out the night before, hang it on your door, you'll get a knock at your door and there's your breakfast. I mean, seriously, it just doesn't get any better than any of that. Also, yes, you are going to eat. But you can work off those calories. There is a, a full gym on, on the ship, as well as a walking trek. So, Doug, I know in the mornings you like to get up and take a power walk. Not even slightly. Uh, no. <laughs> Not even. I was like, no. I'm really thinking about working out on my Disney cruise. But, but it's nice. That's but you nice. know what? Pulling into the port at Castaway Key. So you take a lap around that track, and you're seeing the ports you're pulling into in the morning. It's, it's quite, quite a magical yeah. experience. It's yeah. a, e Even you, Doug, may get up for that walk in the morning. <laughs> it, it may even we'll happen. It's we'll good see. to know it's there. OK. Yeah. Yes, we'll take that. So we have the option of doing it. Absolutely. Yes, I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> and then the, the excitement just keeps going, as if this isn't enough. Um, in 2023, um, there are going to be some themed sailings, which, I mean, how fun is that? Um, the Dream is going to host Marvel Days at Sea. Okay. So all you have to do is around every corner, you're going to see superheroes. There's going to be themed meals, special events happening. So you can check that out when you're on the ship. Um, and then this is, again, Ashley, I keep coming to you because of your little ones. I'm but ready the for The fantasy it. is going to have Pixar Day at Sea. So there is going to be a dance party with Mike and Sully. The Incredibles are going to be on board. And one of my favorite things that they're going to have is a character breakfast with Woody, Jesse, and Bullseye. Wow. And I think that is something everyone's been waiting for for a long time is for a uh, Pixar themed breakfast. I think that's going to be fantastic. It is. My kids love Toy Story. So that will be something that we may want to consider in the future. Yeah. And speaking of Toy Story, we love to hit Toy Story Land any chance we get. So sometimes guests like to book, for example, we booked a stay at the Disney parks here at Walt Disney World mm -hmm. before our cruise. And guests can do that. They can tack on a Disney parks vacation on top of their Disney cruise vacation before or after. And another really cool way to double down on your Disney vacation is by adding in an Adventures by Disney trip along with your cruise. So you could cruise over to Spain and then explore Barcelona with an Adventures by Disney guide. That's so smart. So a good friend of ours actually uh, was on one of the Mediterranean cruises and, and they really enjoyed that. And they actually were the ones who sparked our interest in, in you know, traveling outside of just Walt Disney World and the Epcot World Showcase to see the rest of the world with Disney. So that's it still so gives fun. you the comfort of all the Disney experiences right. and services you're used to. Yeah. Yes, that sounds so great. Listen, Doug, sign me up. Okay. And tell me more. We need to know more about this. So a lot of folks just don't know about Adventures by Disney, which surprises me. Um, it's really, it's a really interesting uh, way to travel. So it brings in Disney's service. It's, it's, it's a service they provide where they help people find other parts of the world, but they have that Disney service being provided. It's so hassle-free. Uh, you're you're going there with adventure guides, and what's neat about those adventure guides, it, it could be there's 40 plus different adventures. They cover seven different continents. They even do polar adventures, which blows me away. I have not done a polar adventure yet. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, but um, but they even do adult only trips. They do holiday specials, but it's amazing. These adventure guides who lead the way are fast are great because. I am so tired of being on a vacation where I feel like my, my phone is in my hand taking pictures all the time. They take pictures for everybody. They move your luggage for you. I want to see Europe with my own eyes, not with my camera. I don't want to see it a week and a half later when I get home. Exactly. So the adventure guides were taking pictures all day long. I didn't feel the pressure of I got to be taking pictures to capture the moments. And frankly, it became kind of one of our parts of every night 
where they would start showing us some of the pictures they've taken that day. So it was really, it was great because you got to relive it, but you did, you had to live it when it was actually happening. Right. You do have access to those photos when you get home, correct? Oh yeah. And there were so many photos. I mean, I think I need a separate hard drive just to <laughs> save all the pictures. And that was great. I mean, just the volume of pictures that we had that we could save. And we, of course, we took some of our own too, but uh, let's just say their photography skills far superior to mine. So it was it was just nice to know that you were going to get all those things that you want. You want those memories, but you got to live in the moment. So and the nice family photo of all of you together without someone having to take that picture. Yeah, exactly. It's so hassle free, and it really makes for a very special vacation. Um, one of the ones that we did uh, just a few years ago, which I really, we had such an amazing time as we did the Rhine River cruise. So uh, it's not a, a large cruise ship like we were just talking about, but it's, it's a ship that actually goes on the Rhine River. We start in Switzerland, we end up in the Netherlands. We hit France and Germany along the way. And what's a little different, we've all seen ads for river cruises and I'm sure they're all fantastic, but Disney's service brings a unique touch that really made it easier for us to travel. First of all, those adventure guides who are amazing. We have the adventure guides. Some of them were uh, from North America. They'd worked in Disney parks. Um, it was, uh, I think it was Byron had worked at the Cinderella suite in Cinderella Castle, which he could not get us in there, which really disappointed <laughs> me. So we had some, some of those folks, but we also had uh, Disney trained natives. So we had folks from Germany, uh, Betty and Daniel, who were from different parts of Germany too. So you had that local touch, that local flair. So you were really getting to experience the local culture. Mm -hmm. They help provide kind of the experience we just talked about with how we've got kids with us and they, they make it more fun. So junior adventurers, kids who are under 12, they give special projects for them. So for instance, they would eat their dinners up, they didn't have to, they could eat with us, but they could go up to the lounge and they had more kind of familiar foods, American food, you know, pizza, burgers, things like that. So they felt that comfort level, but we still were able to expose them during the day at lunches and breakfasts and when we're out on these excursions to some, you know, we, we still got to experiment with local things, but they got that chance to have that. And then the teenagers, I, uh, one of my daughters was a teenager, just turned 13 when we were there. The teenagers kind of got their own room, which was great. It was fantastic. And then um, my wife and I got to do this. It's really cool. We, we got to go eat whenever we wanted, and we didn't have to cut anybody's meat. <laughs> we didn't have to explain that, no, the table pepper is not too spicy. Uh, and we actually got to talk to other adults and have a good time. We got to meet tons of really neat couples from different groups of, of, uh, you know, of, the, of the travel group. Mm -hmm. So it was so neat. During the days when you're there, you spend a lot of time off the ship, which is what's really fantastic. And you get to choose from different activities. You don't just say, okay, we've arrived in Heidelberg. We are all going to do this. You pick from three or four different choices, including time on your own. You can choose to just go off on your own. Um, and that's really fantastic. But the guides, when you're on one of them, they're there, they're helping. Sometimes they give you headsets. Oftentimes they bring in local experts and they get you into things that you, I could never have found on my own. I grew up in Europe. I would never have been able, when we were in one of these small German towns, we got to go into a private organ recital where they had a local music professor. Jennifer on the panel would love that. She's a music teacher. Um, and they told us all about the provenance of the organ. They performed it for us. We got to explore. We got to, and there, there's nobody else there. It's just our group, which was fantastic. Oh my gosh. And my kids, I thought, oh, they're going to hate this. It's learning. You know, it's not learning. <laughs> they loved it. They're like, that was so cool. I'm like, wow, I got two things right this summer. That's fantastic. So, Doug, did you have a favorite activity when you were on your river cruise? Yeah, so I think one of the things that, that was nice about the choices we had was a lot of the other, sh uh, a lot of the other ships have pretty standardized excursions. So, for instance, we were in the beautiful city of Strasbourg. It's one of the ancient capitals of Europe. It's a canal city. And most of the other boats, excuse me, most of the other ships would literally move everybody off their ship onto a glass top boat and it's, they just go down the canal. Look, there's a building. Oh, there's another <laughs> building. It's, you know, it's, and that's fine. You still, Disney still can provide that. They still have that as an option. That's the fantastic thing. It's about the options. But we got to do something a little more active. I have teenagers. We actually canoed through the canals of Strasbourg. Wow. We're in the locks when they're going up and down. And it was, it, it, it was more active. At almost every activity block where we got to choose things, there was always something that was a little more active. And we could time it for when our kids wanted to do something more active or not. So it was just, I think it was those abilities to, to choose different things that were, were better. Now, one of the activities we did that really helped me in my own mind know that going with Disney was the right choice was this. 
I have a daughter with a tree nut allergy, and one of the options, my kids at the time were really into cooking, one of the options was a uh, macaroon cooking class back on the ship. So my wife decided, I wanna stay in Strasbourg and explore the cathedral, that's fantastic, and I go back with the girls. Now, the day before, I'd gone to the adventure guide and I said, listen, I have a daughter who has a tree nut allergy. Don't worry about cross-contamination, not a big deal. She never had to use her EpiPen, but she really wants to do this class and she knows not to eat everything. So I just wanted to give you a warning. They're like, oh no, it'll be fine, that's great. We show up there. They had made her replacement cookies that didn't use almond oil, which uh, or almond flour, which is in a macaroon cookie. Mm -hmm. They had given her this gigantic bag. I didn't ask for special treatment. They had done this for my daughter. Aww. Um, and so she got to be like all the other kids. She didn't have to be the kid who can't do this part of it. She got to be with everybody else. And to me, that's what made it special. That's what made me know I'd made the right decision. And so it was, it was really, I, I, can't, I can't thank them enough. That's what, that was really fantastic, so. That's that Disney magic. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You can and those are the there. things that stick with you. Your daughter's going to remember that for the rest of her life. Oh yeah. Thanks she, to Disney. Yes, and we ate a lot of macaroons on that trip. <laughs> I mean. A lot of macaroons, so. <laughs> now I love that it creates so many different memories, all these different options that we have. And I know, Ashley, you're a big memory person. Like, I feel I'm like you have maybe a special tradition that you have I your do, kids do. I do, so our daughter started expressing an interest in documenting vacation on her own. Yes. And in expressing that interest, I mean, she wanted to take my phone all the time and take 75,000 <laughs> photos of whatever destination we were at. So I bought those little Polaroid instant cameras for okay. each of my kids. And on our trips, I now allow them to take photos on their own. They have an album from each trip. The, it's instant gratification because the photo comes out immediately. Yes. And my daughter's, my daughter's photos are beautiful. Oh. She has quite the photography eye already. And my son's pictures are rather abstract. <laughs> but you really get to see the, the vacation from their point of view, from their aspect, from their eyes. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Well, that all sounds amazing. Now, I actually got to chat with a destination manager and former adventure guide about how they bring all these magical itineraries to life. Let's check that out. Janae Champeau. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you're here today. Me too. <laughs> Are you ready for a fun Q&A? Absolutely, okay. always. <laughs> I got a lot of questions for you. Now, tell us a little about you and your role with Adventures by Disney. Absolutely. I have one of the best jobs in the entire world. <laughs> so I'm a destination manager for Adventures by Disney. So basically that means I'm in charge of several of our amazing, wonderful trips. Mm -hmm. And one of the hallmarks, as you know, of Adventures by Disney is the hassle-free travel. But my job is to make sure that it's hassle-free for all of my adventure guides. So yes. that way they can just focus on delivering that amazing Disney magic and those incredible cultural experiences to all of our guests. So they can, well, I mean, make memories to last a lifetime. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you take care of those who help us make the magic. Exactly. Oh, exactly. I love that. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we got to learn so much about river cruises from Doug. But can you tell us more about other types of adventures? Absolutely. There are so many different ways to travel, which is great because everyone has a different preference. You know, yes. I mean, not everyone travels the same way. So we have, of course, our amazing river cruises uh, on the Rhine, the Danube, and the Seine. But we also have over 40 different land departures. So all over the world, you can take trips anywhere from 6 to 12 days long. We do have some that are a little shorter as well if you want to just kind of work in a little something, little tiny vacation. Yes. But we do have longer ones. Uh, all over the world. And then we also have our brand new expedition cruises. Ooh. So very exciting. So if you want to go to one of those places that's more remote, a little harder to get to, okay. and what do I even do when I get there? Like say Antarctica, the Amazon, the Galapagos, and starting next summer, the Arctic. <gasps> You got to come with us on an expedition cruise. It's oh the way to gosh. travel. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, so many adventures to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can Ooh. even travel just by yourself. Let's say you, Amir, just want to go on an adventure by yourself or yes. maybe with up to 11 more of your closest friends. <laughs> <laughs> you can take a private adventure. We've got 11 different destinations that have private adventure. So it can just be you and like I said, to 12 people. It's a great way to travel. Oh, my goodness. OK, you got my wheels turning. <laughs> I got more questions for you, though. What is your favorite adventure you were able to guide? Oh, my goodness. I was a guide for a very long time, a very long time. So, uh, you know, it's so hard to choose. It's like choosing your favorite child, I know, right? I know. Okay. Don't tell the other destinations. Okay. All right. But I can, I can narrow it down to two. I can do two. Okay. Um, and it would be either Ireland or South Africa. And oh. I know that seems like kind of two weird ones to put together. Yeah. But, I mean, South Africa... 
obviously, in South Africa. Yes. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's exotic, but English is one of the national languages. So there's a comfort level there as well. Right. The food is absolutely incredible. And of course, I mean, who doesn't love animals? That's why you go, right? Yes. But we actually can potentially start seeing animals on day two when we're still in Cape Town. Oh, wow. And so we start out kind of in a, in a city setting and we just progressively get more wild as we go. It's a great flow. It's an amazing trip. And as a guide, it was really amazing uh, to be there because it was different every single week because it's not like the animals clock in for their shift, you know, yes. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see. So it, it was really, really amazing. I absolutely loved it. And then Ireland, Ireland has my heart. Okay. It's just, I have Irish ancestry as do many, many people. And it, it really means something to go somewhere where you know that your family tree puts down roots. Yes. It, it doesn't seem like that would be a huge deal, but it, it really is. And being able to walk around Ireland to meet the people, friendliest people you'll ever meet in your life. You could sit down next to a stranger five minutes later, they're inviting you home, oh. give you the shirt off their back, just wonderful, incredible people. The food is amazing. <laughs> it's so, so good. And the activities are incredible. So I, you pr probably never heard of hurling. If you have, you're one of the Actually, few people. I think I have. have you? Okay. Yes. Amazing sport. Super fun. It's like a mashup of like four or five other random sports like lacrosse and soccer. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's really, really fun. So we get to actually learn about it, get to go on a field, meet some of the players, learn how to play it ourselves. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we get to go to an old farmhouse and learn how to make scones. And probably scones <laughs> <laughs> while we're there. And of course, eating the scones. Best part of the whole day. Of course. We stay in a castle. <gasps> oh, my goodness. We stay in an actual honest to goodness castle. And it's just Incredible. You have the opportunity to walk through the forest surrounding the castle with a falcon on your wrist. Come on. Uh, it, it is absolutely incredible. And while many people come to explore their Irish ancestry, when everyone leaves that trip, they're Irish. Everyone. Everyone is Irish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like that place, it, it gets in your heart. It really does. I oh love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So uh, I'm glad you said too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they both deserve the shot. You're lucky I'm not listing all like 20 plus that I've got. Yes. <laughs> okay, I got another question sure, for you sure. though. Now, why should Disney Parks fans consider an Adventures by Disney trip? Oh, excellent question. I mean, first of all, you know what you're going to get. I mean, it's an Adventures by Disney. Right. So it's not about Mickey Mouse. I love my boss. Don't get me wrong. But, <laughs> but the character is the destination. It's where you're going. And you know that super high level of guest service that you're going to get. It's the same for whether it's the parks or Adventures by Disney, Disney Cruise Line, Alani, wherever you're going. You know, we, we always want to make sure that we not just hit that bar, but keep it going high. And it's not just your adventure guides. It's everyone that you're going to come in contact with. We've made sure that everyone has that Disney level. Uh, you know, in addition to that, it's it is that comfort of knowing that everything's going to be okay. If you have a, a dietary restriction coming to the theme parks, you know you're going to be okay. We're going to take care of you. Right. And it's the same thing. If, you know, if you have a, a dairy allergy, but you want to go to Paris, look, everything's cream-based. Yes, it you know? is. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is. But you're going to be okay. We're going to be able to find those alternatives for you. We're going to be able to take care of you. So having that kind of comfort level and... It's just a great way to travel. It's hassle-free. I mean, don't you want to just show up everywhere and have everything done and set? You don't have to worry about it. I mean, like, let's talk Venice. Can we talk Venice? Can we talk Venice? Well, I think we should talk Venice all okay. the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we come on in. We get off of our first-class tickets on the train. Thank you very much. So we come on out, and you're seeing everyone else that's dragging their bags on the cobblestones. <laughs> and they're like 8 million bridges. They're going up and over. We're just like, oh, my goodness, that looks terrible. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Because our bag's already off onto the hotel. Well, we come out, again, first class uh, seats. We come right out onto our gondolas that are waiting for us. And before you know it, we're being pulled through the canals in Venice and they're singing. It's like we're in a coffee commercial. It's amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so having that great hassle-free travel, having the two adventure guides with you, plus all of our local experts. Wow. And, like, when you see the Sphinx, don't you want to be in between his paws and not, like, all the way over there? Oh, you my know? goodness. If you go to the Sistine Chapel, don't you want to be in just all by yourself? I, all of these amazing things things that we can do, it's because we have that VIP access. And on top of all of that, like I said, the destination is the character. Yes. It is about making sure everyone can really immerse themselves in each destination. You're not going there just to see a couple of things. You're going to engage all of your senses. You don't just want to look. You want to hear, taste, smell, feel. We're going to get your hands dirty. We're going to get you in there and make sure that you really, really experience everything, that you're talking to locals. You're experiencing things that you wouldn't even know are there. We're right. going to take you off the beaten path. And it's a great way to do it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Listen, I think you've almost convinced me. Okay. Almost. All right. I'll <laughs> I've work got on one it. last question for you. Okay. Okay. 
Can you tell us about a new adventure or some of the new adventures that are debuting this year? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, so many exciting ones coming out. So first of all, we talked uh, Expedition Cruising briefly. So yes. the Arctic is one of our brand new ones. I mean, one of the most remote places on Earth. How do you get there? What do you do? What do you see? That's why you take an Expedition Cruise. And it's going to be really, really incredible. I mean, you could see potentially uh, polar bears. You could see puffins. I love puffins. puffins. They're so cute. They look like <laughs> little cartoon characters. So puffins, you can see Arctic foxes. You can see belugas. I mean, who knows what you're going to see. In addition to our uh, amazing team of adventure guides, we also have a team of naturalists oh, on wow. board. So, I mean, you are really going to know what you're looking at. Uh, you know, if it was just me, I'd be like, snow, there we go. <laughs> So having those people that that is their background, that is that is their superpower, yes. is truly an amazing, incredible thing. And to be able to do it with luxury travel and the hassle-free and everything like that, it's just going to be a great way to go. So the Arctic is coming next summer, and it's going to be absolutely incredible. Yay. And good excuse to see Norway as well. So if your bucket list is to see all the Epcot countries, and check Norway off the list because <laughs> we're going in and out of Oslo. So it's a great, great way to, uh, to see kind of two different destinations all at once. And then if we're moving kind of little warmer let's say because okay. that's pretty cold let's go a little yes. warmer and go to sicily oh i am almost like a country in and of itself right yes. i mean sicily is so unique and it's so different people have been asking for so long for us to go there oh, wow. we heard you we're going <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be just like everything else incredible i feel like i say incredible a lot but it really works so. well i feel like it fits with <laughs> every single adventure that you guys offer it is and i mean this is really going to be fun so whether it is is learning the traditional art of ceramics whether it is going to the valley of the temples which sounds like it should be in like peru or egypt but no it's in sicily wow. so being able to see these incredible ruins and get up close with them valley of the temples is going to be something that people will talk about for a long time and Really, really cool. The thing I'm most excited about is going to the National Puppet Theater. So it's oh. this is a a very unique Sicilian thing. Is this uh, these puppet workshops and it's uh, or not puppet workshops? We're going to have a puppet workshop there. I'm getting ahead of myself. While we go <laughs> to this puppet theater, we actually get to talk with one of the masters, see everything behind the scenes, get a private puppet performance, and oh. this is actually a UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. So that is a really, really neat thing, and we're super excited for all of our guests to get to experience it. And then last but not least, we've gone cold, we've gone hot. Let's kind of bridge the difference and go to the British Isles. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go Dublin. We're going to go to Belfast, first time ever in Belfast, Edinburgh, and then London. Wow. And so many fun, amazing activities. So going from the land of fairies and leprechauns all the way up into Northern Ireland, seeing Giant's Causeway, being able to get into Edinburgh, have things like, oh, wouldn't you like to learn how to make shortbread? Yes, uh, I would. By the chef of the Duke and Duchess at Flores Castle. Oh. Absolutely. I feel like that, that shortbread <laughs> would be pretty good, don't you think so? Yes. <laughs> and of course, being able to finish out in London, absolutely incredible. You know, wonderful, amazing city. So many incredible things we're going to be doing there, like a high-speed rib ride on Ooh. the Thames. Get to kind of let out your inner James Bond while you're there. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's going to be really neat. And I'm super, super excited about uh, the British Isles because we have not one junior adventure evening. We actually have two. Oh, okay. Because we do like to have junior adventure activities throughout because there's sometimes that there are things that the children aren't as excited about. Right. And so we want to make sure that everyone is engaged all the time. Yes. And so we do have separate junior adventure activities. Sometimes that we do, whether it's stomping grapes in Greece or infusing your own olive oil in Italy. And so we have a normal junior adventure night, something very similar to the ones that we have on all of our other trips. And then we have an additional one where we're going to have a photo scavenger hunt. Oh, It's going to be very cool. I'm very excited. Oh so yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's so much coming up. There this is so much so coming. Exciting. Yes. Okay. I wish I had more time with you, Janae, but I don't. But thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. And we are so excited that you're here. And thank you for all of your information. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thanks so much. Welcome back, panelists. Now, we've learned about Disney Cruise Line, we've talked adventures by Disney, but I'm feeling like we should go to a tropical destination next. <laughs> now, Ashley, I heard that you might have renewed your vows during your most recent Aulani trip. We did. We had a really small personal ceremony with just a few of our closest friends and our kids, and it was really beautiful. The scenery at Aulani on the beaches of Koalina just can't be beat. And I think that might have been our favorite part of our ceremony was the photography after the fact 
on the beach right outside of Aulani. Uh, it's located, Aulani itself is located on 21 acres between beaches and mountains. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Okay. And again, back to my documentation and making memories. <laughs> <laughs> and these photos are just something we're going to love for life. Oh my gosh. I can just imagine to have your kids there too. How wonderful was that? Now, I feel like we should know a little bit more about the must-dos because Aulani is beautiful, but I hear there's a lot to do. There are a lot of options. There are a lot of options. The resort is amazing and there's so many things to do for people of all ages. So there are three different pools. And when I say we spent 20 hours a day at the pool, <laughs> I'm probably not exaggerating. From the main pool to the infinity pool to the quieter pool, back to the beach all day long, just hopping around all these beautiful places. And beyond that, there are so many things to do to kind of immerse yourself in the Hawaiian culture. For us, we really enjoyed the ukulele lessons. I swore I was gonna keep practicing, but I haven't gotten back to it yet. <laughs> um, but it's on the agenda. There's also hula dancing, hula dancing lessons. Mm -hmm. There are also, there's a storyteller who comes and tells stories at night. Okay. And that was really neat for us to hear the story of Maui. That's the specific one that we listen to and my kids were so captivated and you know they're familiar with Maui we may have watched Moana 10 million times <laughs> but to really hear it in detail from their perspective in their culture was amazing for us and it was a good learning experience for our kids yeah beyond that the scavenger hunts offered at the resort are really really cool you can stop by the community hall they give you a tablet okay and the tablet gives you clues and riddles to finding we did the Menahune adventure trail so you look for these little menahunes hidden throughout the resort and the tablet just guides you right to them. It was good for all ages. We had kids ages three to 12 in our group and every single one of them really enjoyed this. Oh, that's so fun. Now I know you're not the only one that's experienced Alani. This is true. Doug's been there right. as well. And yeah, so we went this summer uh, with my teen, now both teenage daughters and my wife and we, we, we just absolutely loved it. So it was such a neat experience. I, we mentioned earlier, I'm more of a, evening person, not a morning person. What I love about it is it's on the Western coast. So we got the, the sunset views every night, just phenomenal, especially like when we were at the, the Kawa'a Lua, which I'm sure I mispronounced, but my Hawaiian is not particularly strong. <laughs> uh, but the, the luau with the sun setting in the background, uh, the regular beach days, you're talking about the storytellers. It was such a great setting. So I, I really felt like I was experiencing a little more of the Hawaiian culture. Um, we actually surprised the kids. We got an executive lanai for one of the days. Oh. So we had our own little private home base. One of my kids did nothing but explore all day long. We, we, we hardly saw her. She'd come back, get a water, eat some fruit, grab lunch with us, and then back off uh, uh, zipping around. <laughs> the other thing that was really, I thought really helpful with the location of it was we, I, I, I made it a point. I said, we're going to go to Pearl Harbor. We really want to do it. It was so convenient. We didn't have a car the whole time we were there, but right on property, we were able to rent a car. We were at Pearl Harbor in about 20 minutes. Got to do that. We got to drive around. We got to see the North Shore. One of the things I mentioned, my, my weak Hawaiian language skills, one of our most fun things is they have this incredible lounge. I won't even try to pronounce the name, but the decor in it is it's dedicated to learning the Hawaiian language. The decor, they'll have things like they'll have a duck and then they'll have a, like a statue of a duck and then they'll have the word for duck in Hawaiian underneath and it's just this it's this beautiful setting again you get to watch the sunset and and we just had the time of our lives and our girls adored every minute oh my goodness and I think it's cool because everything is a learning experience like yes. Doug mentioned about the decor we also spent a lot of time talking to cast members at Alani and even our kids our our daughter left and had decided that she wants to be a volcanologist when she grows up. <laughs> and she would like to live in Hawaii and study volcanoes, all because she was speaking to a cast member about the Big Island and mm -hmm. learning some things about Hawaii while we were there. That's so cool. I love that both of you have children, obviously, but yours are a little bit younger and yours are a little bit older. So you both experienced different things in the same place. Yeah. So I know, Doug, your, your teenage girls, they I was were- a little angry at them that they had aged out <laughs> yes! of the kids How club. I thought that was very selfish. So we didn't get to experience that part of it. But what was neat about it, I think, was there were just, I described it as, it's like Walt Disney World. If you, I'm gonna come to Walt Disney World for two days and I'm gonna see everything. No, you're really not, not enough time. There was more to do than we ever even had enough time to cover. And that's a great thing. So there was always something to keep the kids 
entertained. You mentioned the Menehune Trail. They loved finding the little Menehune doing their mischievous things. So, <laughs> but uh, I wish I had had a chance to experience some of the kids' club stuff. I think my kids would have loved it if they were if they were in the right age range for that. Now my kids are grown. My kids are older. So is there? Is it still a great place to go um, if you have kids who are older or empty nesters for the different age groups? It is. I think that's one of the most wonderful parts about Elwani is it's really great for all ages. And so if you have older kids who maybe just want to relax on the beach without mom, mm -hmm. or they would maybe even like these scavenger hunts and the trails and learning the culture, the Koalina area itself is beautiful. There are little shops, there's dining, and there's plenty for everybody to do. I love that. Now... So that means our older kids can go, our kids who may be teenagers can go, which I'm in the same boat. Yep. Right. <laughs> but I keep hearing about Auntie's Beach House, Auntie's right? Beach House. Yes. yes. Auntie's Beach House had not yet reopened when we were there. Oh, okay. So we left and within two weeks we booked a trip back this summer so that we can <laughs> go ahead and experience, experience Auntie's yes. Beach House. There's different activities for them to do when okay. they go to Auntie's Beach House and kids ages 5 to 12 can experience Auntie's Beach House. Oh, so that's awesome. we will be back and I'll have a full report. Perfect. Perfect. But it's nice to know that that's an option. So if we bring our, our younger little guests. It is. We'll have and a it place gives you go. some time again to do some of these adult activities or just to maybe relax. And the kids aren't upset about it because, from what I've heard, they just want to stay at Auntie's Beach House all day long. <laughs> the, I love the that. The food was really yes. fantastic, but it was, frankly, the, as good as the food was, a little bit about the treats, right? The treats, yes. So, you know, we like to do dessert before we eat the food. And Dole Whip, first of all, you can't have a Disney vacation without Dole Whip. That's right. So there's a stand right on the beach. They have different flavors. When we were there, they had a Stitch-themed Dole Whip and a Moana-themed Dole Whip. Oh, my goodness. So there's really nothing better than sitting on the beach and being sandy-footed and just walking up to this shack and walking back with your Dole Whip and enjoying it on the beach. It's a, it's a little bit more magical even than a regular Dole Whip experience. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love that. And I love that you have a lot of options, a lot of dining options. So I know your family's all about the snacks and you told me a little story about how you guys lined up a little bit early <laughs> for certain We were snacks. very about the snacks. So there are so many dining options at the resort itself. You really never have to leave. And the poke bowls at Ulu Cafe, which is just the quick service restaurant right outside of the pool, were to die for. And we would send one member of our party every day at 11.20 a.m. because the poke line opened at 11.30. Our kids tried poke bowls for the first time, which was a great experience for them. And I always encouraged them to try new things, and it turns out they loved it. So every single person in our group was ordering poke. You can also grab, um, at, at that cafe, you can grab just grab-and-go breakfast and quicker treats, and they do have more of your standard kid food and more basic options as well. Right. But... That is just scratching the surface when it comes to dining at Aulani. Our absolute favorite was makahiki. Mm. And makahiki offers breakfast and dinner. And the breakfast is what we all know and love from Disney World, character breakfast. Yes. So we got to see Minnie, Mickey, Goofy, Donald. It was very, very cool. And we actually did this for my son's fourth birthday. Oh. So it was extra special. He was wearing his little pin. <laughs> he got to meet the characters. And again, there are menu offerings that are very local to Hawaii. So I tried the loco moco yes. for breakfast and it came on top of a spam fried rice and it was fabulous. So it was really cool to try all of these things. And again, so many dining options. I know Doug has a bit of a passion for a certain Alani dining experience. Yeah, so actually, <laughs> uh, on a path on one of our trips, my wife and I really enjoyed Ama Ama. It's a little more. It's kind of their fine dining option. It has again beautiful view of the sunset. The food was insanely good. I think it was one of our special ones. And and frankly, when we travel with our girls, we like to have a dinner where my wife and I go have dinner, and the girls get to be trusted to go explore on their own too, which is nice. That is super nice. Yeah, I think the the amount of options is great, but the fact that you can also choose your dining experience. So that was a more upscale dining experience. You can also just be sitting by the pool and go over to Off the Hook and sit there in your swimsuits and grab a bite to eat. You can grab something from the poolside bars and eat it by your seat. You can even grab sh grab shave ice, oh, which is a very popular option at Elwani. It comes in many flavors. You can get multiple flavors and it has, it's shave ice with these cute little Mickey ears on top. Oh. So it's Mickey shaped. You can add condensed <laughs> milk. So it, it's just a win-win. There's food and treats everywhere you go. And I think one of our favorite 
quick lessons that we learned in Hawaii, a, a little pro tip for an Aulani vacation is you can drink out of coconuts and you can drink out of pineapples. Oh. And you can order these at the pool bar. And even kids, you can get a Shirley Temple and a pineapple. You can get your whatever drink of your choice, a That's Sprite so and a pineapple. <laughs> and our kids loved it so much that they were just refilling their pineapples with <laughs> different <laughs> drinks throughout the trip until they until they weren't frozen anymore. So it was, it was really cool. Oh, my you goodness. You were you're talking about drinks. One of the things that I thought was neat is for those folks who are used to going to, say, uh, Walt Disney World, like in the resorts when you can get the refillable mug, they had the refillable mug. So our kids loved it. There were these uh, freestyle machines everywhere. They could run up, get their own soda, take care of it. And we didn't have to like go keep buying them another one. So it was it was nice. It helped. It, it was also good budget wise. Frankly, it was right. nice to have. But it was very convenient. They had they had the machines everywhere. So that's so great. And just like something we're already used to here, yeah. it's nice to see that familiarity yeah. in a place like Aulani. Yeah, I think sometimes people may be intimidated by traveling to a destination. You know, we've talked Disney Cruise Line, we've talked Adventures by Disney, and now we're talking about flying to Hawaii. That's not always something people just pick up and do. Yes. So sometimes there's an intimidation factor, but that, that Disney difference for Aulani is is the key here. And they just make it so comfortable. There's a familiarity of things we know and love. You should start by visiting the Alani website. Okay. And on there, you can also find a list of all the activities offered throughout the resort, including the spa mm -hmm. and Rainbow Reef where you can snorkel. Okay, I'm loving all of these suggestions. This has been so much fun, everybody. I am ready to book another vacation. Let's so I go. think we need to wrap this up because I got some work to do now. <laughs> but you know what? Let's do a lightning round. Are you guys ready for this? Yep, we're ready. So, Let's do this. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Okay. And I'm going to need the first answer that comes to your mind when I okay. say it. Okay? Now, Kathy, we're going to start with you. All right. Then we'll go to Ashley. Then we'll go to you, Doug. That's you. Okay. Right. Time to prepare. Here we go. Okay. Favorite dining experience you've had? Uh, the Palo dining rooms on the Disney cruise ships. Character breakfast at Makahiki. Our, our adventure guide suggested the best waffle place in all of Amsterdam. Ooh, okay. Favorite vacation memory from your Beyond the Parks vacation? Uh, my husband and I celebrated our 25th anniversary by renewing our vows on the Disney Dream. Oh. My kids learning how to snorkel in Hawaii. <laughs> Eating really authentic German schnitzel in Heidelberg, just my family, just the four of us in town. All right, what is your bucket list Disney trip? Well, now it's Alani, so absolutely. <laughs> I've done my job. <laughs> Disneyland Paris. Mm. So Adventures by Disney, but it's a tie between Italy or maybe the Galapagos Islands. Oh, okay. Last one. Advice to share with our listeners that are looking into a Disney vacation outside of the theme parks for the first time. Try something new. Just go for it and try something you've never done before. Immerse yourself in the experience and the culture. After you've experienced the world at Epcot, you need to go see the world where it is. And when you work with Disney, like on Adventures by Disney, it helps take some of that culture shock away. So those were all great answers, you guys. Oh, so exciting. Now, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Plan Disney Podcast, which just happens to be our last episode of the season. But we have great news. We'll be back for season two starting in January. So if you haven't listened to all of our episodes of this season, be sure to go back and check those out. But make sure that you're checking in every third Wednesday of the month for the new season. In the meantime, if you have any questions of your own, be sure to follow Plan Disney Panel over on Instagram and Plan Disney over on Twitter. You can ask your questions there. If you want to ask a direct question to any of these panelists here, be sure to go to plandisney.com and they'd be happy to help you. Also, if you want to stay up on the latest news, be sure to stop by Disney Parks blog. A big thank you to our panelists for being here and a very big thank you to our sponsor, State Farm. We're so excited to see you in season two and we wish you happy holidays. See you soon.